Color begins with light. The biggest source of light on Earth is our sun. The sun radiates electromagnetic solar radiation. Earth is covered by a dense atmosphere that can scatter the shorter, bluer rays of incoming light. Earth's equator receives the strongest rays of the sun's light and heat. Light is made up of photons, pulsating packets of energy traveling through space. All photons travel at the same speed. Each photon has a specific energy level, which determines its wavelength. The visible spectrum is electromagnetic energy between about 380 and 700 nanometers. Almost all the light we see consists of a blend of photons of many wavelengths. Color results from the unequal distribution of energy across the spectral wavelengths of visible light. The properties of a color can be analyzed using spectral curves. The wavelength measured in nanometers is used to distinguish the hue, which is always one or a proportion of two of the spectral colors, red, yellow, green, and blue. Multiple wavelengths at various energy amounts combine to produce a dominant wavelength or dominant hue. Here is a green object. Here is a red object. The total amount of radiant energy across the wavelength distribution is used to distinguish the brightness or the related qualities of lightness darkness of a color. The number of different wavelengths contained in a color, a few or many, is used to distinguish the saturation of that color. This green is saturated. This green is desaturated. Color is an event that occurs between a light source, an object, and the observer. Color is a sensation evoked in the observer by the wavelengths of light produced by the light source and modified by an object. Change any one of those three things and the color event becomes different and we see different color. Let's examine the spectral curves of a few different light sources. Here is an example of daylight. Its exact composition changes with time of day and weather. This example has a correlated color temperature of 6500 degrees Kelvin. It is bluish and it looks cool. Here is an example of a standard illuminant. A standard illuminant is a light source that has been measured by the International Commission on Illumination, more commonly known as the CIE. The standard illuminant is called D50. It describes a different kind of daylight that has a correlated color temperature of 5,000 degrees Kelvin. It is yellowish and it looks warm. The Kelvin scale is used to describe color temperature. Low numbers on the Kelvin scale are warm colors, visually speaking. High numbers on the Kelvin scale are cool colors. When the great Swiss theorist Johannes Itten taught cold warm color contrast in his color class at the Bauhaus School, he described the extreme of cold warm contrast as blue green pitted against red orange. Gray balance is the linchpin that holds the balance between warm and cool colors. Here is the spectral curve of the red phosphor from an older cathode ray tube monitor. It is spiky. Spikiness in some light sources can lead to unexpected color matching or metamerism failures later when comparing printed sheets under different viewing conditions. What is usually called the color of an object is in reality its reflected color when it's illuminated by light. These curves are called spectral reflectance curves. Objects are made visible by light, and by the placement of their shadows, we recognize their shape and form. Objects in bright light are a source of reflected color, just as shadows are the recipients of those color reflections. Here is the spectral reflectance curve of a magenta object. Magenta is not a spectral color found in the rainbow, but as its spectral reflectance curve indicates, it results from the absence of green light. The fundamental basis of color reproduction is the three-channel design of the human retina. The retina is a nerve cell lining at the back of your eye. The nerve cells that respond to light are called photoreceptors and they come in two types, rods and cones. Rods are more sensitive than cones and provide us vision in low light conditions. We have many more rods than we do cones. 
Cones provide us our color vision. There are three kinds of cones. Those sensitive to the long wavelengths in the red region, the medium wavelengths in the green region, and the short wavelengths in the blue region. This three-component structure of color vision is called trichromacy. One very important aspect of human color vision is called opponency, or the opponent color theory. Color receptors in the retina work in antagonistic or opponent pairs. There are three opponent pairs, light-dark, red-green, yellow-blue. The processing of color opponency happens in the second stage after trichromatic processing. The opponent color signals then pass across the optic nerve to the brain for further cognitive processing. Thus, according to the theory, a color cannot simultaneously be light and dark, it cannot simultaneously be red and green, it cannot simultaneously be yellow and blue. This opponent color design is used in the CIE color space called C-Lab, or LAB for short. LAB is used in many color management systems today. L for light dark, A for red green, B for yellow blue. The true complexity of dealing with color takes place in the interactions between a viewer, an object being viewed, its environment, and the temporal sequence of its viewing. The human visual system adapts its response to what is in its field of view. Adaptation is not instantaneous, it happens over time. It responds to changes rather than absolute physical magnitudes of stimulus properties. It responds to the nature of how we remember what we have seen. Our visual system has a dynamic response and adapts to the chromaticity or color of the illumination. This is called chromatic adaptation. It is when the appearance of objects are more or less preserved under different colored light sources. Chromatic adaptation involves cognitive mechanisms as well as physiological ones. Adaptation stabilizes after about one minute. The G7 gray balance method considers some of these complexities in the way that it determines its target recipe for CMY gray, based in part on the influence of the paper color. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.